what's going on boys and girls welcome back to another video by yours truly uh in today's video we are going to be giving the spotlight to kuki shinobu and toma since they've gotten a massive buff with the new dendro reactions hyper bloom and virgin i figured i'd make this video and show you guys how they are performing in the spiral abyss the hardest content of the game and uh give my thoughts and just pretty much show you guys how they uh can best be utilized uh, depending on the team comp you build and you know just all that good stuff so let's go ahead and talk about it first and foremost how do you build kuki shinobu on a hyper bloomed comp how do you build a team around her and then the same thing with toma how do you build the virgin around him uh, i think they literally have the exact same identical concept you basically first and foremost to even run a hyper bloom and virgin team comp three slots are already occupied because you need a hydro unit and a dendro unit to, in order to create the dendro cores the green seeds on the ground and then, of course, you need your Electro and or Pyro unit, depending on whether you're doing Virgin or Hyper Bloom. So that's three slots already occupied. You only have one slot left. That one slot, in my personal opinion, should definitely be another Hydro unit because, one, you want more Hydro application so that your Dendro and Hydro can create more Dendro cores. But two, with the new buff to the Hydro Resonance giving you a 25% boost to your HP, both Kuki Shinobu and Toma will benefit from that as well as the two Hydro characters you're choosing, which in my opinion should be either uh, Kokomi or Ayato because they both scale with the Hydro Resonance as well. But not only that, they just synergize incredibly well with this concept, Virgin and Hyper Bloom. Now don't get me wrong, if you wanna run Child because you're a fan of Child or you wanna run, I don't know, uh, Mona, Barbara, whoever the hell else, do what you got to do but me personally i'm going to be rocking with either ayato or kokomi because i think they synergize the best with these teams however i will also say that shing show is probably another amazing option because he can actually run a full-blown offensive build since ye lan is going to be battery well they'll battery each other you can actually put a mist splitter on him or a uh, jade cutter and just go full-blown offensive without having to run the sacrificial sword and he can do a lot more damage plus he can debuff the hydro element with his um he, he has a passive somewhere in his kit that gives you a negative 15 percent debuff to hydro which is going to benefit both him and ye lot but the only thing i don't like about ching show is that there's not really going to be a driver on the team you're just going to be like i'd probably recommend just shooting with ye lon as the driver if you rock ching show because everybody else's auto attacks are dog shit so you'd have to use ye lon so that she can benefit from her own hydro passive the 50 percent damage bonus that will be applied to her burst which means she'll deal a lot of damage. So you could totally substitute him out for Shing Show. It'll be a phenomenal option as well. Uh, but me personally, like I said, Ayato, I'm a big fan of him. Uh, he's strong as shit as well, and his burst works well with the kit. But Shing Show's a great option. So I'll throw him in that mix as well. Anyways, let's go ahead and go over the builds, you guys. Ayato's gonna be rocking an R5 Black Sword for me. Uh, my Ayato is C1. Um, he's rocking Heart of Depth, and his talents are 6, 10, and 8. Um, he's level 90, of course, and he has 82 over 180. I actually mid-maxed my Ayato. He normally runs the uh, the RNG attack speed set, but I mid-maxed him to run Heart of Depth instead because I was able to achieve 142 energy recharge, and he does run into some ER issues. Hover around 140, you should be fine, especially with Ye Lan on the team. Um, speaking of Ye Lan, she's rocking the Elegy of the End bow to give 100 EM to Kuki, which is going to allow your Kuki to deal even higher um hyper bloom or your toma virgin damage hyper bloom or virgin damage so uh lg is an amazing option for her she's sitting at 175 er which is actually a perfect amount of er for ye Lan. she's looking at 74 over 173 i have an emblem of severed fate on her but if you want you could run a two-piece 20 percent uh hp boost a 15 percent hydro you know two piece of each set she sees zero her talent is eight eight and ten um she is a best in slot character for this team comp i think no matter what team comp you're running in terms of hyper bloom and virgin she's the best character to have on the team if you don't own her then you can literally substitute in a shink show i would say or kokomi shink show or kokomi but neither one are, is going to provide the value that she's uh she's going to provide up to a 50 percent damage bonus to your main driver 100 em given to the entire party and ridiculous amounts of off-field dps she's a top tier god tier unit as i've been saying since day one i i strongly recommend if you don't own her and she comes up again do not skip her uh anyways with the traveler he's going to be rocking the favonius sword or a sacrificial sword whichever one you want favonius is going to provide probably more energy recharge to the team whereas sacrificial sword can give him more energy recharge himself i'll leave that up to you to debate but favonius sword is a phenomenal option uh, he's rocking the deep wood memory set because specifically because 
the uh, Hyper Bloom and Virgin uh, reactions deal Dendro damage. So of course you wanna debuff Dendro itself so that the reactions can deal even more damage. That's pretty much what his, uh, his role is on the team, to debuff the reactions so that they deal more damage and apply Dendro uh, application. I don't give a damn about his damage on this team comp. He, we're not, we don't have him on here to deal any damage. He has two jobs, Dendro application and uh, debuff Dendro. That's it. So yeah, with that being said, we literally want as much ER on the Traveler as possible. His ER right now for me is 240. It can get 20 higher if you have a level 90 Favonia sword. But trust me when I tell you this fucker, like it, his, his ER is awful. That's the one biggest downfall of the Traveler is the fact that his energy recharge is just garbage. So you wanna have something with very, very high ER on the Traveler. With that being said, energy recharge is the best hourglass to go for in my personal opinion. After that, I just put on random pieces on him just to get him uh, up, but I was focusing on ER on every single piece. ER, 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 and ER. So yeah, that's how I'm building the Traveler. I don't really give a damn what else he has. Just make sure he has ER for this team comp. If you're running him on a Quicken and uh, spread aggravate team comp, then it's, it's different. You wanna run him a little bit differently. But for this, all you're worrying about is get burst up so he can apply Dendro. Uh, his constellation, C1 right now, and he's one, two, and eight. I've been building my boy up. Now, for Kuki, um, she's rocking the Iron Sting, but I actually think she'll do better with the new Sapwood Blade, the free-to-play uh, Dendro Sword that I haven't obtained yet because it has ER built in it, and she just struggles just a little bit with getting her burst up uh, with my 137 ER that I currently have right now. I think she'll be much better at about 160 ER, and that sword would definitely fulfill that while also it provides a passive where if you pick up the cord, you get EM. At R5, she can get basically the same EM she gets from the Iron Sting. Plus it matches the drip better. So I think that is gonna be a little bit better, but you do not wanna neglect Elemental Mastery since she is the one and the only one triggering Hyper Bloom. Now Elemental Mastery, I think you should shoot for pretty much honestly around, yeah, 750. If you can go higher than that, that's great because Jaylon's gonna give you another 100. That's gonna put me at 850. And then he also gives up to 60 Elemental Mastery too with his burst. So she will also, she can actually get up to 910 EM with my current build. And that's gonna at least put us, if she was level 90, that actually put us around 30K ticks. Somewhere close to about 30,000 damage per tick with her Hyper Bloom. Same thing with Virgin, same concept. But yeah, you don't wanna to neglect too much EM because that is a big factor in your DPS. Um, Thundering Fury set is what we're rocking. I'm still trying to build up a Gilded Dream set so that I can figure out which set is better. But as of now, you cannot go wrong with Thundering Fury. If you got triple EM, that's what we're building. EM, EM, EM. Uh, substats, ER, that's pretty much it. You know, ER and HP percent, but don't stress too much about substats. We're not worried about her getting crit rate and crit damage. Cool if you get it, but honestly, the, the main thing we're worrying about is as much EM as possible, keeping her burst up so that she can keep spamming it. And then of course, some HP percent in there to uh, help with the heals. Another big positive with Kuki Shinobu, I have her at C0 and truth be told, if I were to get any constellations, it would hardly make any difference. Um, because she works perfectly well at C0 with this team comp, which is great. That means she's incredibly free to play friendly. You literally can have just one copy of Kuki Shinobu and she will perform very, very well on these team compositions. And my talents on her is one, eight, and two. But my main concern right now is just getting her to level 90, both her and Toma. I don't really wanna do it, but truth be told, if you get them to level 90, they get 7,000 more damage on their fucking Hyper Bloom and Virgin ticks. And you can tick two at a time. So that's 14 fucking thousand damage we're missing out on because they're level 80. So I do strongly recommend investing in them all the way up to level 90. Now, the last thing I wanna talk to you guys about is just rotation. Rotation is, um, the way I go about it is the first thing I wanna do is pop my burst with Ayato just to get some hydro application out on the field. Then I go into Yelan's burst right after that, along with her skill to get funneled energy back into her and Ayato. From there, you burst with the Traveler first. The reason I want to burst with the Traveler first is because I don't want Electro getting in the way of the Hydro and Traveler burst reaction. When you fuse the Traveler's burst with Hydro, you're gonna deal more AOE Dendro versus when you trigger it with Electro, it just ticks faster. I'd rather more AOE than ticking faster so that more people are getting hit by the Dendro uh, application, allowing us to spawn more Dendro cores on the ground. 
Hopefully that makes sense. Anyways, he's third in rotation. You pop his burst and pop his skill. Let that Favonius sword uh, proc and make him absorb that shit. Do not let anybody else absorb because I'm telling you, his energy recharge is booty cheeks, bro. So let him absorb it unless your Kuki Shinobu's burst is not up, then you can do that as well. But soon as you're done with popping bursts with Ayato or whatever character you're owning, Yelon and then Traveler, the last person you're gonna switch over to is Kuki Shinobu. Pop her shit and then pop her burst. Then you go right back to your main driver, whomever that may be. If you have Shing Shou on the team, I would highly recommend it be Yelon. But if you have Ayato, you just go into Ayato and just start going off. Kuki Shinobu's skill is gonna be pulsating, right? while your Ayato is doing his beautiful ass sword attacks and it's just gonna be ticking off the hyper bloom. So that's how the team comp works, it's very simple. Now I will say on the first rotation, Kuki Shinobu is not gonna be above, below half health. So you're only gonna, you're gonna lose out on a whole 1.5 seconds of her burst, but it's not a big deal, trust me. Do not like go out of your way to make sure the first rotation is extending the duration of her burst by 1.5 seconds. You're actually gonna lose out on DPS doing that. Just make sure to do it the second rotation, get her health below 50% so that her burst can last 1.5 seconds longer because that is her passive. But that's how that team cop works, guys. Now, for Toma, it's the same concept. The only difference is, boys, you got two options. You can rock the Dragon's Bane or you can rock Favonius if you're struggling with ER. I'm rocking Dragon's Bane on him because I mid-maxed my Toma to have uh, almost as close as possible to 200 ER as he possibly could. I ran Toma before with only like 160 ER and it just wasn't enough. However, I tested Toma with 195 it's enough it's totally enough so you can run dragon's bane if you have around 200 er if you don't you're going to be forced to run the favonia sword um but i've been running him with the dragon's bane with 195 er crimson witch of the flame set triple no 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 double em he still needs his er cup of course now for the sub stats the only thing i'm worried about is energy recharge and elemental mastery everything else i don't really care about like crit rate and crit damage and all that shit. i do got some godly pieces for him but I don't really care about them. The only thing my main concern is, do they have ER? Do they have EM? If they do, great. And pretty much every single piece has ER except this one. So if we get another Elemental Mastery Crimson Witch piece with ER, I will substitute this shit out in a heartbeat. Fuck the 14% crit rate. I need that ER. So, uh, and that, that that's because that allows me to run Dragon's Bane so that I can get way much more damage on my Toma. So we'll be showcasing these two team comps uh, time completion on floor 12 chamber one first half we'll be showcasing these team comps uh so that you guys can see how they perform against one another does birds and toma work better than kuki shinobu uh you'll be able to find that out guys and then i'm um, at the very uh end i'm gonna showcase these team tops team comps time completion against a team comp such as this where it's uh spread aggravate tenari and yaimiko just to give you guys a good understanding how that team comp compares against a team comp such as this that's actually pretty fucking strong but yeah that's gonna wrap it up for you know how to build them how to play them yada 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 now we can get into the showcase and uh give my overall thoughts on how they perform
and there you have it guys uh, i hope you enjoyed the showcase we'll go ahead and give my overall thoughts honestly i'm in I'm impressed, first and foremost, with Kuki Shinobu and Toma and how they perform on Virgin and Hyper Bloom team comps, especially considering they're both not level 90 yet. When they're level 90, we'll even do more DPS, and I think they might even be able to get close to that 50 second run that you saw this team comp have, which reminds me, I didn't show this team comp's builds off. Uh, he's C1, 7, 8, and 9, Tenacity of the Mill, uh, Staff of Homa, you don't need it. You can rock a Favonius of the Lance. Uh, he's 62 over 166. Yeah, Miko's rocking Memory of Dust, but uh, she's not rocking that, actually. She's rocking a, a full-blown set. I'll put it on real quick. Okay, here we are. Sorry about that. She's rocking Thundering Fury, Shiminawa's Reminiscence, sitting at 80 over 140 with 121 ER. She's C0, and she is double crowned. This is one of my favorite characters in the game, of course. Queen Miko. Um, Albedo's rocking the free-to-play Cinnabar, Spindle. Uh, Husk of Opulent Dream, 65 over 133, C0, uh, 686, and then finally Tanari's 8, 5, and 8 with C0, Wanderer's Troop set, Skyward Harp, and he has uh, 87 over 150 with 106 ER. So that's the team comp I put them against, boys, and honestly, they did very fucking well considering that Puki Shinobu is C0 and uh, Toma is Toma. <laughs> he is C6, by the way. I think I forgot to show him off. Give me a second. Uh, here he is. Yeah, I forgot to show his constellations off. He is C6, and his talents are 5, 9, and 10. Yeah, they perform incredibly well, boys. I don't recommend using uh, either team comp in the second half. They do very well on second half, uh, chamber one and two, but chamber three, you go up against this fucking legendary Pokemon, this goddamn big ass green bird, who has a 75% dendro resistance, who that pretty much deletes 70% of your burgeoning hyper bloom damage because his resistance is so high against dendro. So it's just a shitty uh, kryptonite scenario for hyper bloom and uh, burgeon team compositions. I don't recommend it. So if you're gonna run this team comp, run it on the first half or run it on the second half and uh, clear the first two floors. And after that, you're gonna have to like switch your team comps up to uh, a team comp that can slap the bird, which honestly, if you want if you want my help on that, just run Electro. Run Electro, quick and spread or whatever the hell, but trust me, Electro shits all over that bird. It's it just He just gets stunned the entire fight. But that's besides the point, boys. This is a great team composition to run with Hyper Bloom, Kuki Shinobu, and uh, Burge and Toma. I think they are very capable of slapping cheeks in the future. Are they meta? Uh, probably not. They're probably a notch under meta. I don't know, I don't know. We're still in the testing phase, but as of now, I'd say they're not as strong as a National Raiden or goddamn uh, Melt Ganyu or Freeze Ica. I don't think they're that strong, but they are fun and uh, very easy to use, and they do do a lot of damage, and they can clear the shit out of this abyss. Uh, take care, and I'll catch you on the flip side.